Hello everyone, this is the Hedge Mage and welcome back to another video. Today, my friends, we'll be taking a look at all my favorite new commons entering the popper format from the newest standard legal set, Bloomboro. In my previous reviews of new standard legal sets, I've tried to give my top three picks of new commons, making a video for each color as well as for any multicolored and colorless cards entering the format. However, this set, there appears to be very little even remotely playable cards for us to sink our teeth into. So instead of forcing myself to do any mental gymnastics and making a case for new cards that will likely never see any manner of play, I've come to the decision to try something new and just make a single dedicated video where we can assess the best cards from each of Magic's cardinal colors or lack thereof. But my friends... Before we get any further, if you would like to support my humble little channel, if you could leave a like on this video and subscribe, I would greatly appreciate the support. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. In blue, there's a new counterspell that has piqued my interest called Dazzling Denial. For one generic and one blue, we get an instant that counters target spell unless its controller pays two, and it gets even better if we control a bird. If that happens to be the case, the spell is countered unless his controller pays 4 instead. In blue decks right now, controlling a bird is an incredibly easy feat to achieve, especially with cards like Murmuring Mystic seeing as much play as it does. Though this card is certainly not going to replace Counterspell in the format, even if it is an improved Lofty Denial, I can definitely see at least a couple copies in decks that run Mystic. Another deck that I think gained bit from this is Cog Gates, due to Squadron Hawk being a huge part of that deck's game plan, as well as the fact that the generic mana in its cost makes it much easier to cast for multicolor piles. In black, we're getting a new removal spell that might not look that great at first, but hear me out on this one. That card is simply called Saver. For one generic and a black, we get an instant that gives target creature minus two minus two until end of turn, and you get to create a food token. Though this is a more expensive version of Disfigure, the fact that you also get some food to munch on I think is honestly pretty good. With how good Burn and Aggro are currently in the format, especially with decks like Koldatha and Rakdos Madness, gaining any amount of life over the course of a game has become very important. Not only that, but the amount of threats that have toughness 2 or less are many. I think this card could easily slide into any mid-range pile in black such as Golgari Gardens or Orza Blade, giving them not only an extra removal option, but also a little extra life gain to help them stabilize against the ferocity of the red mage. Speaking of red, even with the amount of toys Rakdos Madness has to play with, it seems our friends at Watsi can't help but to give them a new one. In red we're getting Sazcap's Brew. And as you guess it, it's yet another discard outlet at instant speed, no less. For one generic and a red, we get the all too familiar additional cost of discarding a card. This card also features the new gift mechanic, where you may gift your opponent a tapped blue fish creature token. And since the majority of your attackers in madness are in the air in forms of kitchen imp and sneaky snacker, there is little reason not to. If you decide to be so friendly with your opponent, you get the added bonus of giving one of your creatures plus two to their power until the end of turn. And did I mention, even without your generosity, you get to draw two cards? Now, on to green. This color has really struggled to remain relevant in the format, as much as I love a good stompy pile, but in Bloomboro, we are receiving some new food to savor. That's right, we're talking about Heaped Harvest, a new artifact with the food type. For two generic and a green, we essentially get an effect that is very reminiscent of another card that's legal in the format, that being Cultivate, with the added bonus of a little life gain. When this food enters the battlefield, we get to tutor a basic land and put it onto the battlefield tapped, and we get to do it again when we sacrifice it. Of course this delectable artifact has the usual food ability of two generic mana tapping and sacrificing it to gain three life. The biggest question however is where this card will fit. As many people have tried making food decks a thing in the format, usually featuring my favorite little kitty Cauldron Familiar, they have failed at having a lasting impact on the overall metagame. 
I can definitely see this fitting into Golgari midrange piles, as at worst it's just more fodder for a deadly dispute even if all I want to do is feed the kitty. With white, we're getting even more food to grace our eager chompers and another new artifact with the food type. That card is Carrot Cake, and it has a very similar design to Heaped Harvest, having a triggered ability when it enters the battlefield and when you sacrifice it. For one generic and a white, this artifact will give you a 1-1 white rabbit creature token and allows you to scry one. This card also has the familiar food ability of two generic mana, tapping and sacrificing it to gain three life, triggering its ability once more. A while back, there was a version of Orzov Gates that featured many food artifacts, such as Candy Trail and Lembus, and our favorite little slugger, Ginger Brute, all hoping to get as much leverage out of Cauldron Familiar as possible. A deck such as that definitely seems to gain the most from this card, though it possibly could also find a home in White Weenie, but what would you cut for it is honestly beyond me. Not every day that we get new multicolored cards in Popper, and we definitely got a few in this set. It seems very unfortunate that the vast majority likely just won't cut the mustard in terms of playability. That being said, there's one little froggy I would like to highlight, and that is Pond Prophet. For two hybrid mana of a green or blue, we get a frog advisor, and surprisingly, the only new creature we'll be talking about in this review. When this creature enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card, making it an easy target for blink effects like Ghostly Flicker and Ephemerate allowing you to get as much value out of it as possible. Unfortunately, the 1-1 body on this amphibian does not make it very survivable, as it will likely die to basically any board wipe available. Figuring out where this card will fit is certainly a challenge, but an older Simic pile featuring Wormfang Drake may see a revival. Seems we'll be talking a lot about food with this set, but that also seems very on brand for it, as we'll be wrapping things up with another new artifact, and though this one doesn't have the food type, it does create a food token when it enters. That card is Bumbleflower's Share Pot, and for two generic mana, we get a new utility artifact that creates a food token. This card has the activated ability of paying five generic mana, tapping and sacrificing it to destroy target non-land permanent, though it should be noted only at sorcery speed. At a glance, this card looks pretty bad, as there are very few decks that would want to spend that amount of their resources on such an effect. But there is one archetype in the format that does. Tron. Tron piles have definitely gained a new tool with this, though it should be noted they already have many other similar cards available to them in the forms of Urn of Godfire and Universal Solvent. Still, it's something. And that about wraps up our review of the new commons from Bloomborough. But I'd like to know what you think about the cards that we covered today. Is there any commons in the set that we didn't cover that you're excited to try and brew with? Let me know in the comments below your thoughts. And that will be all for today. Wishing you all the best top decks in the world. Until next time.